Welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, welcome to the channel. Today, another day in real van life. Uh, I'm sorting the bathroom out a bit. Bathroom's looking a bit tired. It needs some paint. Uh, obviously the shower tray, I'm gonna paint today. I'll use a paint for that. Do it probably about every three or four months. Like I say, this shower does get used a lot, so uh, it needs doing every three or four months. Uh, but we are on about redoing this whole bathroom. We've got some holes in the wall and stuff. Had some accidents, you know. And I'm actually not really liking the speckle thing anymore. So I might recover that at some point. And we're also going to be ripping this out, I think, and putting a corner sink in to create a little bit more space in here if we can find one cheap enough. There we go. That's one coat. I'll let that dry off for a couple of hours. Give it a second coat and then leave it for a good 24 hours before we use it again. And while that's drying, I've got to tack these cushions because not only do they need a bit of a clean, the foam inside has all come apart. And so I'm going to take them all the bits again and redo them. Which means I've got to take all these blooming staples out. Nice. I bet those of you that watch this channel regularly think I never leave the van. Well, you're absolutely right. I never leave the van. They're actually not that hard to get out but there's a lot of them uh, obviously originally we made these ourselves to fit because I changed the size of the sofa uh, to turn it into a, from a dinette into a like a c-shaped sofa uh, and these were made up of bits of old sofa bits of our old sofa that we threw away uh, when we moved out of the house and it didn't really work uh, so I'm hoping I can do something a bit better. I think I'm ass. That job is almost done. I haven't uh, stapled them down fully because I want to make sure that Mrs H is okay with that. But it has brought down the sofa quite a bit because I've took some of the foam out. But it is much neater. I do like it. But what's happened is that now. So I need to make that a bit better. But I do have another one. So I could go behind that cushion there and build it up over the top of that but obviously it's the same so i have to kind of try and do it so that it doesn't look like it's the same thing over the same thing so it just looks like foliage or i could take that all off and just do it again hmm let me see uh, that kind of works it's a bit better than it was of course <sighs> yeah what are you looking at Right, it's now the next morning. Mrs. H didn't moan about the sofa, so I'm gonna do it all properly. And what I mean by that is I only put a few staples in, just hold it together, just to see if it was okay. Make it all nice and neat and tidy back there. Hello, B. I had a bit of a disaster with the shower. That was slowly dribbling. The shower head was slowly dribbling, and I didn't notice all over the wet paint so I had to do it again um, this is the second coat which I've just put on this morning so that looks lovely so we'll let that go hard through the day it means I can't use the toilet which is annoying now I did promise a live stream when we got to our 1000 subscribers we're now like 1089 or something like that. I don't know <laughs> near on 1100 subscribers really grateful for that thank you so much um, the problem we're having is internet uh, we rely on our phone internet. I have two SIM cards. I have one in my phone and I have one in my old phones, a different SIM. Getting internet where we park usually is a nightmare. Um, so I haven't ab been able to get a, a good enough signal where I can do a good smooth live stream. So ah, it's really frustrating. So at the moment we're not able to do it. Uh, we are looking at maybe upgrading our internet. Uh, we're looking at Starlink, stuff like that, but it's expensive. Everything's so bloody expensive, right? Um, so at the moment we're not able to do it. So this part of the video is us answering your questions Well, the ones we've had so far 21 questions in total. It's quite a lot But do keep them coming and we can make a part two perhaps uh, So 
here we go. All right, so here goes. I've got 21 questions from you guys. <laughs> um, and there's more. So there's going to be more than one video, I feel. But this is, uh, we're going to go through these. Um, and a lot of them are quite pretty what you expect. Some of them not so much, including this first one. Um, but I'm going to answer these and I'm going to get Mrs. H to answer them. And then you can get a comparison of what she thinks, what I think. Uh, we'll obviously agree on some things and some things we won't. But So question one is... This made me laugh, actually. Do you miss entertaining large gatherings? Now sp space is limited. I've, <laughs> I've never enjoyed uh, entertaining large gatherings, even though I am a singer-guitar player, and that's what I do for a living. Um, I, when we lived in a house, I don't think we ever entertained uh, large gatherings. No. Um, living in a van, you can obviously go to campsites and things like that. Um, and in the summer, depending on where you're parked up, we've had people over. Um, we've had other van lifers over where they've parked their van near us and we've all sort of mingled, like you do. Um, so answer to that is no, not really. Do you miss entertaining large gatherings now space is limited? Uh, we never did large gatherings, really. I mean, it's quite nice having the garden to like do a barbecue and stuff like that. I do miss the garden. I didn't miss the work to it. There's way too many trees. Um, <laughs> gatherings in the house. I suppose you can spread out, can't you? And you don't, you know, if there's people you don't want to speak to, you can go in another room. I don't know. <laughs> that sounds really unsociable, doesn't it? Um, no, not for that, really. Miss it for other reasons, but not for large gatherings. Question two. Do you see this as being long lasting? Yes. Um, we've already done 16 months and it doesn't feel like that at all. It feels like we've only just started. Um, we have no intention of going back to our house any time soon. We haven't achieved nearly nearly the things we set out to achieve. What I mean by that is the, the places we want to visit. I mean, we haven't even gone abroad yet. Um, all those kind of things. So, And we're still upgrading the van um, as well. So, you know, yeah, it's going to be, I think, about Mrs. H, I think many years to come. Unless something happens, you, know, you don't know what's around the corner. Anything can happen. Um, but, yeah. It, for the time being, yep. Do you see this as being long lasting? What are we talking about now? The I van. think I think he means <laughs> van life. Um, well, it's been nearly a year and a half anyway, hasn't it? Already, isn't it? That has flawed, hasn't it? Yeah. And I think it's because we have to keep doing things to it. Well, what was that outside? Sorry. Um, keep doing things out to the van and changing it. But it has gone really quick. But yeah, no, I, I see it, I guess, as a long term at the moment. I don't know. We'll see what happens tomorrow. Go. Number three. What are the downfalls of van life? The downfalls for me for van life is the convenience. And what I mean by that is when you live in a house and you have unlimited water, unlimited electricity, you go to the toilet and wait bye bye to, to your business, all those things, put your bins out, blah, blah, blah. It's all of those things that you have to take into consideration, you have to plan for, you have to get your water, you have to get your, make sure you've got power, make sure you've got diesel for the diesel heater, make sure you, you know, you've got somewhere to put your bin, make sure you, you, you empty your toilet regularly. All those things takes a lot of time and, and sometimes some forward planning. And also driving to park ups can be time consuming. So, so that is really the only real downfall I feel to, to van life. Um, space a little bit, we do have a lock up, uh, but that will probably tie into some other questions. But yeah, it's basically that. Houses are convenient. What are the downfalls to van life? Downfalls, it's bloody hard work. <laughs> getting electric, getting water, rushing around all the time. It's not like this easy, lovely, uh, not as much for us. I don't know, that's because we work, so we don't have a lot of time. But um, you sort of visualise it, don't you, as sitting on a mountain. Chilling, drinking your coffee. I mean, like you forget about the old the necessities of like having the water, having electric, you know, charging everything. So yeah, it's what was the question again? What the downfalls? <laughs> oh, downfalls. Uh, the convenience, I guess, not yeah. having a washing machine. But not that that bothers me that much. But yeah, convenience, I suppose. And 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 space. Obviously, if you want to spread out and do Christmas and decorations and have people and have your garden and without people staring at you, if you like. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, that props. Do you miss your music studio? Yes, I really do miss my music studio. As some of you know, and those that are new are watching now, know, will know, I am a musician full time, have been for a long time. 
um, and I've always had a studio of some sort whether it's just a spare room or a shed at the bottom of the garden whatever so I, I was always able to just go in and all my music gear set up because I play drums piano guitar bass guitar sing write record I can't do any of that now well I can but it's very very condensed and I do have a, a setup and I also have another YouTube channel which explains what I do now I'm, I'm in the van there is some videos on there um, I have another channel it's much bigger than this channel so if you're into music and gear I mean music gear and all that kind of thing then you should head over there uh, but yes I do that's one of the things I do miss the most do you miss Brent's music studio I think I went in there about 10 times do I miss it yes because Brent was down there nothing against you but I could like pamper and have my own space and you were down there a lot so, sounds mean doesn't it but um for me I don't miss it I miss you in it and you liked it so yeah <laughs> but what else <laughs> okay do you ever miss living in a house no not really not I haven't yet haven't got to that point yet where I'm like oh I really really miss living in a house no not at all even after all this time I've got everything I need here we have everything we need here you know that's how we set this van up um, so no oh. do you miss living in a house um, yes, no, I don't miss the bills, I don't miss the mundane of it and the cleaning and um, having to give all your money away for a house that we didn't even own, so I don't miss that at all. The space, you're going to miss the space because we've gone from like a three bedroom house to this and having a big garden, but it doesn't bother me the space as much as I thought it might, but um, do I miss the house? First, I don't miss all the crap that was in the house. Why did I keep buying stuff? Why, when we moved out of that house, did I have like a thousand sieves? I mean, is that normal? No, I don't think it is. But I just kept, you keep buying stuff to fill out all the cupboards. So, yeah, it was quite nice getting rid of it all, to be honest. Do you think you will ever tire of T Bone Sketchy Facts? How could you ever tire of T Bone Sketchy Facts? Really? I mean, she is a font of knowledge she keeps the brain educated keeps the brain nourished with her overwhelming factual knowledge no we love t-bone sketchy facts do you tire of t-bone sketchy facts <laughs> do you tire of them Hang on, it says Charming. do you think you will ever tire of t-bone <laughs> sketchy facts one i don't even know why you call me t-bone <laughs> Sketchy facts, that's something you've made up. I, you, you hit me with a question that I know nothing about. I can't help if it's sketchy because I don't know about it. But uh, will you? I don't know. <laughs> no. Okay, cool. There's merch coming. <laughs> Is there anything you miss about living in a house? Yeah, like I said, the convenience. The convenience in the studio for me. Everything else, I'm not really bothered at the moment. So um, I think maybe the other thing is um i miss my playstation at the moment not really able to play playstation uh, because of our power situation the, the playstation just juices too much i can if i go on a campsite and obviously we are going to be upgrading our power situation so um i may be able to play playstation a bit more but i do miss that i like a bit of resident evil you know that kind of thing is there anything you particularly miss about living in a house I sort of said that, didn't I, about things I particularly miss. Um, like, now it's getting up to Christmas, and I was, like, thinking about, like, how I decorated the house. You know, you get all your crap out. You have, like, the reindeer on, in the garden and, and doing wreaths. But it was nice because we used to do that with Harley. We'd get the Baileys out and make some, like, Christmas wreaths from all the shrubs in the garden. So, I don't know, I suppose... With all the things I said, really, the convenience. Washing machine. Washing machine, doing the house, you know, and having the space to cook. Even though we're pretty lucky, I've got quite a lot. I like trash the place within seconds. This is dead neat. I want to use like two pants of her, one pair. But uh, what else do I miss about the house? I suppose it's, it's space, isn't it? I suppose to get your stuff out, do what you want to do. I suppose that, that really, nothing else much. What do you love about van life? What do I love about van life? I love the fact that this is ours. We own this, this is our home. Um, and I love the fact that you do have a certain amount of freedom and what I mean by that is like you can park up somewhere we have like 
our regular park ups that we go to uh, but sometimes we we go off and just find somewhere uh, somewhere else or you know might use a park for night app or something like that that will this will tie into another question i'm sure um and you can just drive off so you you can go to different places and stay in different places I really like that about van life and also not paying rent is to pay so much money in rent this is one of the reasons we got into it in the first place when you're paying £15,000 a year just to rent a house off someone without bills then yeah kind of got to like van life for that what do you love about van life I'm so close to my beautiful husband every day another sketchy fact <laughs> um, what do I particularly like about it I think once you get used to the idea that you haven't got as much stuff that you're taking and you, you uh, it's taken like this time to realize like I don't need all them bits of clothes that I brought in initially or shoes because you pretty much wear the same sort of stuff all the time so it's quite nice having getting rid of that like it that you can be in different places we've seen loads of different new places since we've had the van life that we definitely wouldn't have done if we we're in the house just because money and work and because you have to travel to different places you think well i might as well just go that bit further and go around and now i'm in the van and whatever but um yeah that's what i like about it do you ever feel claustrophobic no not in this van this is a relatively large van it's a it's i think it's a five berth motorhome old one classic 36 years old but no i don't ever feel claustrophobic i can sit in here all day long and i don't get cabin fever not really sometimes i just feel like i need to just go out for a walk and get some air and stuff but uh no i think absolutely fine here i think if it was if it was smaller because we did originally look at doing sprinters and things like that if it was a smaller van then maybe but um no not at all absolutely no everybody's different of course I'm quite happy sat in here. No worries. Um, no, don't get claustrophobic. Do you ever feel claustrophobic? A little bit easy for you to say. Claustrophobic. No, not really. I do get annoyed sometimes though, because you just, especially when you've been at work all day and you've not really seen, especially now it's winter, you're not seeing any any daylight in the morning, any daylight at night. And so, yeah, you feel really, because all the lights are on, the curtains are down. I think that summer, not so much because everything's open. Winter, I think, is quite hard. So feeling a bit like that. Where do you park? Well, there's lots and lots of options for parking, and it, and this is kind of like a whole video topic. Where can, where do you park? Um, if you're looking to doing van life, and this is one of the, one of the worries, and it was one of my worries, is like where where are we going to go? Um, but there are places you can go. The, the best thing I found is to find where the other van lifers go. Um, and you can just do that by driving around and having a look. You can see where van, vans are parked. Um, but also get on Facebook groups and stuff like that, forums, do your research. There are plenty of places you can go. You can pretty much park anywhere you want as long as it's uh, no restrictions. And I think it's, it's a case of just being considerate where you park. You know, you don't, even though it's legal to park in a certain street, you don't want to be parking your great big van right outside someone's living room window, for instance. And you know it's not it's not very comfortable for yourself, let alone them. So you're probably going to get problems off people if you do that. And if you are going to park what they call urban, uh, then don't stay like for weeks on end, or even days on end. Just you know keep moving around. But there are park ups and there's park ups we use which are you know opposite fields and you know out out in there's big long roads where there's no houses you know things like that and there's no restrictions and so you get plenty of that and if you're if you're traveling you can use apps like park for night and things like that um failing that then just go to a campsite um if you join motorhome caravan club or the one of the other ones or even uh pitch up and stuff like that really good you can find some really really cheap uh campsites you know if, if you're stuck um we haven't had a problem parking up we haven't been to a campsite for months so it's not really an issue um, you soon get into knowing where to go if that makes sense uh, just do your research um, watch other youtubers as well and see what they do urban motorhome is a good one he does explain how he parks up and he has a nine and a half foot sorry nine and a half meter motorhome as well and he manages to you know off grid in that so yeah. where do you park wherever so now we've parked in quite a few places I mean, they're fairly quite safeish places, I think. That's a bit boring, isn't it? We've 
parked in car parks, we buy the beach, down a road, behind, you know, always respectful places, but uh, wherever really. I don't know, it depends. it's work related again, isn't it, for us, and unless we're having a break somewhere. You just learn to, I, I guess, see what places look at, like a, a good place to go. Like, you don't want to be on top of a house or anything like that. You don't want to be, I mean, I don't literally mean on top of a house like Santa or anything like that. I mean, just, you know, people looking at you. So there is lots of places that are, are good. Yeah, I don't know. We haven't explored everywhere yet. Okay, do you get cold in the winter? No way. We have a Chinese diesel heater in here. It's, I think it's a five kilowatt. The original, the first one we had was a two kilowatt. So there's a diesel tank just behind the driver's seat here. That holds 10 litres of diesel. And that does our, all our heating and our hot water. And it gets toasty in here. It gets too hot, if anything. Um, you can be sat here. It would be minus, I think last winter it got down to about minus six. And it's baking in it. You're sat in here in, you know, shorts, t-shirt. You're opening windows, you know, putting the extractor fan on because it gets really really warm in here and we get boiling hot water within 15 minutes with that so no don't get cold whatsoever it is a motor home so it is kind of insulated um not as good as if you did a van conversion yourself and insulated it yourself but it's it's fairly insulated you know we can put thermal blinds up at the front and we've got a curtain going across the cab which helps with the drafts coming in but really with the heater it's toasty do you get cold in the winter no I get cold in my stupid car going to work, but not in this van. It's hot, if anything. Yeah, it, it, we get up in the first morning, you haven't had the heat on, the floor's cold, but put a rug down and it sod. <coughs> put an extra layer on. I'm pretty much have shorts and a t shirt on, don't I? Mm. Best whatever when I'm in the van. I'm too hot. Could be my hormones, though. Do you feel safe? Right, at first, when we first went out, I was terrified. And we parked in a car park which you weren't supposed to park in, and it was literally across the road from our house where we lived. <laughs> I was terrified. I did not get any sleep. We drove around a few places, and I was like, don't like it here, don't like it here, don't want to park here. Now, we don't generally care. We just, you know, like I said, we just find somewhere respectable to park up, somewhere reasonable. It's not going to, you know, be an obstruction, and it's legal, and all that kind of thing. And like I said, we do have our regulars park ups now. Um, no, I don't feel unsafe at all obviously we have security measures in place so we we have uh, um, obviously locks on all the doors we have extra locks on the habitation door you make sure the windows are locked down that kind of thing um, we've got security cameras all around the van we've got security camera inside the van um, as well so it's you know steering lock clutch lock if, if somebody wanted to get in here I mean it doesn't matter how much you have in place for security if somebody wanted to get in they'd get in but they would it would be difficult and they would make a whole ruckus so i don't think um i don't think it's an issue we've never had an issue so far um mainly people break into vans when they're unoccupied not when they're occupied so no yeah we do feel safe and just make like i said just make sure you park up in, in somewhere that does feel safe and if it doesn't feel right don't park there um i wouldn't suggest parking particularly in the middle of nowhere. I wouldn't feel as safe if I was parked up somewhere where there was no other people. Do you feel safe? Um, yeah. Yeah, I do feel safe. I mean, there's obviously times when you're at the gigs and I'm here on my own, but places then are usually places I'm familiar with and there's usually lots of people around. So, do I feel safe? I mean, you get weird noises sometimes if you're in a new place. I think it's when it's a new place, even if it looks pretty all right, I don't know, you sort of have them senses going, do you know what I mean? Got the ears are flapping a little bit. Do you know what I mean? It's like, oh, what's that weird noise? I ain't heard that one before. And then you're just a bit more alert to it. But I don't know, you just, I suppose as time's going on, probably being a bit too blase about it, I suppose you should keep up your your protection vibes to make sure. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, generally I feel safe, yeah. I, I don't not feel safe. How do you get electricity? You know, I've struggled with all of these technical questions that you're asking. How do you get electricity? So we've got a leisure battery. We've got two power banks. We've got solar. So we charge up our, our power banks as and when we can. Um, obviously, Brent takes them to gigs. You know, we, we, we do whatever. Um, what else? Um, the solar. Well, <laughs> when we get sun, we get some solar. We've just got a new solar panel, haven't we? We haven't put the old ones on yet. Um, yeah, that's it, isn't it, really? And when you drive a bit, I guess. 
Is that technical? <laughs> Am I supposed to add some technical to that? <laughs> it's close enough. Okay. How do you wash your clothes? Yeah, good one. We don't have a washing machine in here, obviously. Some vans do, some of the bigger ones, but we don't. So we use laundrette. That's it, really. Tracy does that. That's one of her responsibilities. She goes off and does that. Laundrette. And final question for this video is food shopping and cooking. What do you do? Well, we have a pretty decent sized kitchen and a pretty decent sized fridge. It's not like family size. But um, for cooking, we have air fryer now. Uh, we did have a portable oven, but we got rid of the gas oven. So we have air fryer, we have a Ridge Monkey, we have got frying pan, saucepans, we have gas hob, all that stuff. And we have a, we do have a full size sink and drainer as well, which is really handy. And when I designed this van, I put in lots of worktops as well. So there's, there's space to put plates and pots and pans and stuff like that. Even though T-Bone does moan that there's not enough space, but it's the most you can get in here i'll tell you couldn't do any more really but no she it's good cooking's not a problem she does cook some good meals in here actually she's a pretty good cook t-bone you know what i mean and and obviously in the summer if you're campsiting and stuff like that you can do barbecues outside not a problem that's always good spread out and uh so yeah food shopping we don't do too bad actually we've got a pretty decent amount of storage in here like i said fridge got cupboards for food stuff like that you you know it's, it is not as spacious as a house so you can't go out and do like a whole massive shop but it's not too bad and you do have to consider weight as well so you don't be carrying too much stuff around with you but we're never too far away from the supermarket so you can just get what you need when you need it <laughs> so food shopping and cooking what do you do you're obviously cooking now uh yeah um food shopping as normal go to wherever you can't buy as much it's took me ages to not buy like enough food to feed half the street because that's what i was used to doing doing a big shop so you've got to be a bit more t like it, it but i don't know saying that though our cupboards are pretty much stupidly full of stupid things because i like cooking so i buy ingredients and then you don't do it again for ages silly so i've got loads of spices and stuff like that um what else cooking whatever we started off with loads of different types of pans and l lots of stuff and thought we could use like induction hobs and start i think brent said about air fries and stuff like that so we, we just like reverted back to how we did it really it was a bit annoying at first because i was just using up one hob when we got rid of well we didn't even get rid of the induction hob did we it's just i couldn't power it couldn't use it you broke it it wasn't broken it was only the corner because one of the spices fell off jumped out of the rack and landed on it and smashed the corner it worked didn't it didn't it all work <laughs> we just couldn't power it wasn't that the way so. it went oh crap i burnt the toss oh um it's because you keep staring at me i can't cough uh what uh cooking yeah just i don't know i find it hard to cook just for two still and like i never feel like we're getting enough when obviously we are getting enough but it's so you saw you if you've got a family like we did and cooking for lots of people it's really hard isn't it I think what were the best thing to do really would be for us just to go and shop for our meal that night, wouldn't it? Because then we'd probably have bits left over and we'd just get one thing instead mm. of getting like loads of stupid stuff. But other than that, the let van life is in the supermarket. Good one, eh? <coughs> so don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And if you have any more questions, chuck them in because if you've got any more questions uh, or you want me to go into detail about anything or make a whole video on anything in particular, let me know if it's helpful for you. Um, God bless you. See you in the next one.